Welcome. I hope you enjoy the conversation you're about to see between me and another comedian about religion and comedy. These are conversations I'm calling Disorganized Religion. God bless. And for those atheists out there, may nothing await you after this life. Hey, nerds. Welcome to another episode of Disorganized Religion. I'm your host, as always, Seth Lawrence. And this week, we have the mighty, fantastic Liz Glazer for her second appearance I am so honored to have her back. Welcome oh, back, Liz. Thank you, Seth. Um, I'm just trying, I, I imagine I can't be the first person to ask about your degrees behind you. Sure, well, you, um, you would be familiar with all of these degrees. You have all of these. I mean, at this point, I feel like, like I got a bunch of degrees and then I became a comedian. So I feel yeah. like at this point, those degrees are props. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I'm yeah. using them in the backdrop of my podcast. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're my props too. They're my props yeah. too. So I have my, uh, oh, let's see. It's always so BYU, I see. So we have the BYU undergrad. Right. Congrats we have again. The, yeah, thank you. The uh -huh. UNC Law. Uh -huh. And then the UNC Bar, or the NC Bar, North Carolina Bar, Bar license. Yeah. This one I'm particularly proud of. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. Elementary oh wow school. you got best comedian best comedian third does grade that, does that mean that there were other comedians and you were the best of those comedians this was a teacher awarded award uh -huh. so in my class the teacher deemed me the best comedian of the class that was my okay. i was the class clown essentially yeah. so <laughs> It's, it's been in the blood for, for many, many a decade now. Yeah. Um, and yeah. was that something that, I don't know that I've like ever quite interviewed you on this, but like, and if it's okay. Yeah, please, yeah. please. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah. But did you always know, want to be a comedian? I mean, I always had an interest for things funny um but you know my parents and i think you, you know we talked a little bit about this your your background is similar in that you have pretty involved parents who were practically minded and you know for me that same thing right so yeah. so i never grew up thinking ah oh, i am going to pursue a legitimate career a stable career in in entertainment that was never yeah. really in my you know plan um yeah. but it was always a hobby so i was always interested in it but yeah. um and you like once, listen to stand up and stuff i stand up was kind of forbidden in my house not like sure. explicitly or expressly okay. forbidden but mm -hmm. you know a lot of stand up deals with uh difficult uh, subjects you know yeah. so yeah. while i was living under my parents roof uh my parents both were sort of like you know my dad was a bit more involved in that respect of kind of censoring what we you know, so like Seinfeld, The Simpsons, both forbidden in my house growing up. Um, you know, but you we would like watch them now. Oh, I love, I love Seinfeld. Yeah, oh. absolutely. And, and my dad sort of come around to to Seinfeld, I think a little bit. But uh, my mom loves Jerry Seinfeld stand up a lot. So you know, we watched that. We watched. I think there was one televised album of Bill Cosby's that was up back when it was okay yeah. to watch yeah. him. So uh yeah and then you know jim gaffigan mm -hmm. saw him um brian regan my parents love brian regan oh my gosh so he's great so, yeah he's fantastic so you know it was always kind of uh on the periphery um and i'd heard stories growing up actually of my mom's mom mm -hmm. performing in vaudeville way back in the oh. day wow and come to find out, my grandma would tell my mom and her sisters, hey, never pursue a career in entertainment. It's a wow. terrible place. You know, Hollywood is awful for women. And I think in her day and age, absolutely, you know, and sure. it's only barely starting to get a little bit better now, right? I yeah. mean, with how public things have gone. Yeah. So, sure. yeah. So my parents, you know, my mom in particular, I guess, uh, grew up with this aversion to entertainment so she was surprised when when uh this this sort of developed in my life you know yeah. but that's why you marry up right liz that's why we marry up so that yes. we can pursue our dreams <laughs> yeah i mean 
Yeah, it, it's certainly true that I'm recently married, as you know. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah. And congratulations on your not recent marriage. Right, right, exactly. Um, Although you might, how long did you and your fiance or now wife date before getting married? Um, just about three years. Or I guess okay. actually we had completed three years before the wedding date. Sure. Got yeah. it. Got it. And okay. We so we were still, mm -hmm. we still have you beat. We're still together Good. longer than you. But okay. for a lot of couples, it is interesting. They'll be like, oh, we dated for 10 years. I'm sort of like, yeah. oh, why yeah. aren't you married? I don't, ah. care. you know, yeah, I don't yeah. understand that. What is the point? Well, I mean, I suppose it's, you know, it, it doesn't have to be everybody's goal. Sure. Um, but I, I mean, I understand your question about it but you know yeah people are different I, right i try to be open-minded but it yeah. is funny to me when it's like you're basically married are you just afraid of the commitment or is this your way to rebel against the societal yeah. norms i mean yeah. if so fine but you know if it's like well we just want an easy out it's sort of like okay i mean yeah well, right. I, I mean, I, I don't remember who said this, whether it was actually like a comedian or a lawyer, which is an interesting <laughs> thing. Not much but, of a difference, though. Yeah, because sometimes it's like a rule in law could be a premise in someone's joke. Right. Um, right. Uh, but somebody said that getting married is just about making it harder to get divorced. Like, sure. To break up. That that's right. really the point. It's just like, increasing the barriers to exit right um, which i think is true yeah um and therefore would be a great premise uh yeah. I, I don't know that i have punch lines <laughs> i definitely don't that have them ready sure um, oh come on i thought you were pulling a josh edelman and just getting oh God, setting no. yourself up <laughs> for uh i have I this mean, bit like, i have this right bit. right no no i mean <laughs> i love josh edelman um, i do too i do too in terms of, uh, I try to avoid any kind of conversation that's like engineered toward pretty much any specific outcome. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. But, but you know, okay. But, to my detriment a but, little but, bit. But, mm -hmm. Right. But I mean, I feel like. I feel a, a similar sort of aversion from that aspect of talking to people that you do, but I can't help myself if a certain topic comes up that I've been ruminating on comedically oh, yeah. to yeah. slip in and see, you know, does this one work with this person? Uh, Is this well, okay? right, right. I think that's, that's kind of, you know, the um, occupational hazard. <laughs> sure. Is, and, and it's, it's not dissimilar from law, because, mm. you know, when, you, when you're in law school and then you, like, go to a restaurant, you're like, oh, my God, this is a contract. And, you know, like, you're seeing <laughs> right. everywhere. Right. And, and people are like, like, oh, brother. Right. Like, if I leave without paying, like, did I breach? And, you know, suddenly <laughs> yes. this is, like, interesting sure. to think about. But what if the service um, wasn't good? Can you right. Then Right, a last. unilateral contract. It's right. like finishing half the bridge. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so yeah. as interesting as that is to like first year law students, I think is right. the equivalent of, you know, the, the punchline you're trying to see if it works in a conversation yeah. Yeah. Um, for comedians. And I guess like, I mean, for me, you know, my desire, not like it's just me, but it mm. is my desire to match up the way that I am in my kind of freest and most me state yeah. to the way that I am as an entertainer on stage, on screen, whatever. And so the more that I can let go, the more that I'll be able to do that, even though, of course, the paradox among probably others is, you know, that's similar to like, like anything. It's like you get more natural by practicing more. But right. then in order to practice, that's not a natural state. And right. your natural state sometimes can be very nervous and fearful. And right. like the question then is like, is that really me? <laughs> like what if I identify as my anxious, you know, yeah. nervous self? Yeah. Where, yeah. So Well it's I sort mean, of like I, I wanna have a, a sincere conversation at some point with Maria Bamford. And mm. and is yeah. she really like this? Because yeah. I imagine yeah. she is. 
but how interesting would it be if she were not, you know, just very. Yeah. Right. Cool, and I, I don't mean to be like the expert on her because <laughs> certainly I'm not, but like, you know, interactions yeah. that I have had with her, I have gotten the sense that she really is the same. And it's amazing because, yeah. you know, I mean, her, my Kaplan, like those are people who are like so kind and, um, not just like they are kind, but it seems that the things that they make jokes about mm. have an intended message to be about kindness and right. promoting, you know, like yeah. a loving state of mind, which is, I think, difficult to do because it can be easier sometimes, you know, to be mean. Yeah. And to, to have a punchline that is at someone else's expense. Um, sure. And yeah, I mean, not that those are always easy because punch. Right. Or, or in, always yeah. negative, you know, I mean, right. that's kind of the right. point of punching up, right? Yeah. Some yeah. need so, to be torn down. Some people yeah. just need to be, right? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I have those people as models um, because they seem to be able to do comedy in a mm. way that seems like, themselves and also that it's like you can be nice yeah um yeah yeah and I, I don't know if that's like a religious thing i think it's in part one you know certainly yeah. it wouldn't contradict values right i mean right i don't think there's a religion that says it's bad to be kind even <laughs> even if there are certain instances in which that may not yeah be what happens in practice i don't think any religion on the books <laughs> is about <laughs> right not right. being kind I was going to say, I think there might be some Satan worshipers out there that would oh, classify sure. themselves as religious, right. but, yeah. uh, but I, you know, I, th I think certainly as far as mainstream accepted religions yeah. with a more charitable arm to them. Yeah. Right. It's all, you know, certainly yeah. kindness is a huge factor. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, um, but yeah, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so there might be some new listeners who don't remember or weren't kind of tuned into this podcast when you first appeared so just we joked about sort of lawyer stuff at the beginning maybe just give people a quick oh, yeah. synopsis of who you are Liz Glazer yeah absolutely well I mean I'll say the joke version which is okay. that I I was not always a stand-up comedian I used to be a law professor and that is as we all know the typical route to stand up comedy, generally speaking, you go to law school for three years, practice right. for two, teach for nine, get tenure, give it all up and do stand up <laughs> comedy. Um, yeah. I mean, basically people are like, D why did you want to be a lawyer? And I'm like, it's a very long setup to a joke. Yeah, that yeah. I plan on telling in approximately 14 years. True um, dedication yeah. to your craft, yeah. Liz. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Excellent. And uh, right now, I mean, you and I met in LA uh but where where are you now are you in new york now yeah uh new york area i'm in new jersey um, okay which is also where i grew up i did not yeah. expect by the way that like moving from la to new jersey that the main advantage would be the comparatively immaculate air quality of new jersey <laughs> is that but right oh here we gosh. are that is awful yeah, yeah. Who, who would have thought New York's dump had better air than LA? Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I didn't move because of that, but, right. um, you know, I moved, I don't know. I mean, I'd planning, I'd been planning to move back uh, the whole time that I was in LA. That was always <laughs> in the plan. Not yeah. for any reason bad about LA. It was just, just like, I goal. wanted, yeah. Like I wanted to go for three years uh -huh. and actually like, part of the reason for that, I was like, well, if I can go away as I did to law school for three years, I moved to Chicago to go to law school sure. from New Jersey. I was like, well, if I could go, if I could go away to law school for three years, then I could also go to Los Angeles for three years and kind of like see what that's about. If I want to have a career mm -hmm. in show business, um, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever that'll look like. Right. And you're in LA now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're still in LA, yeah. uh, you know, powering through pound through yeah. the election day we'll see what happens really? tonight today we are recording this on election day yes. before yes. armageddon we'll see what happens uh, I, I love moments like that like one of my kind of key features as a person i don't yeah. know that we talked about this specifically um but 
it's my first ever memory mm. um, of my life. Yeah, and wow. I was like staring out into space as I was wont to do as a child. Yeah, like mother, Moses. What's that? I said like Moses. Oh yeah, I'm exactly to bring this like back Moses. to yeah. religious. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, so I was I was Mosesing. Yes. And my mom, you know, just like passed by me in our apartment where we lived at the time, and she was like, "What are you thinking about?" And I was like, "Mommy, one day today will be a long time ago." And she was like, I got to call my sister and tell her this wow. one. Yes. But she, you know, I mean, apart from like the bragging to family members about like, <laughs> oh my God, my child is a genius. Basically a prophet. Um, exa- I mean, yeah. listen, you know. Moses. Right. But, yeah. uh, but anyway, yeah. so moments that are in and of themselves historic, like that day, I don't yeah. actually remember. I remember the moment because mm. I just, you know, do, sure. but I don't really remember like what else was going on that day. I think, I mean, I was literally sitting in where we lived, looking out the window. So mm-hmm. nothing, nothing was happening then. And my day today, you know, I didn't physically vote today. I voted before, like many people did. Sure. And did you vote today or you voted before? No, I voted a few days ago, like right. la- early last week, actually. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I mean, it hasn't really been that momentous sure yet. sure and, but, but but anyway i i say all of this one to brag about how smart i was as a child which i really don't get to do that often so i appreciate it and i don't yeah. have my degrees behind me these are just random <laughs> pictures just, and so i gotta make yeah. sure we all know how smart not only i am but that right. i always the, you, right, and, right right so in addition to all of that though it's like there's something magical about moments that are like moments we'll probably remember. And I love that we get to have this moment. Like we always would have had it, but it's like we have it on election day. Right, right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, look back uh, on on this time. I mean, 2020 is going to be one of those years that is always going to be, were you born before, after, or during, you know? Right, who? right. Where do you fall? During, were you born again, you know? Yeah. 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 And I I wanted to ask you two things. I mean, one is after dating someone for for that long and then getting married, do you feel like your relationship has changed at all? Or, you know, for you, what was the motivation for getting married? Because there's so many who just don't, you know, just like, well, we don't need the government to tell us that we're together. Yeah, well, I like to involve the government in everything I do. I mean, we had mayors over when we're having sex. I mean, this is just wow. like standard for us. And yeah, so sure. getting married was just like, of course, like they already know so much about us. They're such a part of our lives. Of course, we want to invite them in. Obviously, yes. that's a joke. It's not a joke I've ever said before, although now <laughs> I'm saying it, I'm like, that, that's it's not bad. bad. It's really not bad. Yeah. Which which mayor would you use for the punchline? I feel like oh, you do need such- to get- Personal. I mean, honestly, it's like, I don't, you tell me a mayor and I'll probably use it because it's just right. like, I don't know any mayor. Like Gavin Newsom. Right. But then it's like, Gavin Newsom's too hot. Like, Is he? he's like, yeah, he's really hot. Okay. I, 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 the only reason I, mean, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be able to, yeah, I wouldn't be able to pick nine yeah. out of 10 mayors out of a crowd. One, yeah. he is, he's like very kind of like movie star-ish mm. looking. And two, I once, a friend was going to some event that was like a Gavin Newsom thing I tagged along. And I'm like, wow, he's like, he's very like, kind of like in a, I mean, he's better looking than Bill Clinton, but in the way that Bill Clinton is like, that's good looking guy. Like he's just so, you know, right. he's like, wow, who's that kind of person? Gavin Newsom has that quality. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like you can't use Gavin Newsom because he's got just it. too hot. It's the joke's not funny. You got to have like, like, like a Chris Christie. You know right. what I mean? If, if Chris, I mean, we're in New Jersey. Yeah. And he's, he's, what is he? Sorry. I don't know who anybody, a governor? Well, a governor. I don't, he was a governor. Is he still oh. a governor? He, he was, I think now he's actually the debate prep for Donald Trump. Sure. It's really yeah, what he yeah. does now. But I, you know, he was, I think, governor. I was going to say, you know, if you use senators, those might be more sort of uh. general public knowledge, you know? Yeah. I think obviously you'd have to go with a Rick Santorum if you're going to make fun of. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, I just like, I would have to do research for this joke that I've not been working on. Although now it's like, that's what's fun about 
comedy is to just kind of like, like, you know, in terms of the research, like we're lawyers. And so we yeah. know from research. Yeah. And honestly, the research that goes into a joke with some exceptions. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that there are people who do enormous research for jokes. Of course, like, of course Gary Goldman with the state abbreviations or whatever. Okay, fine. Yeah, there are some but, dolphin jokes out there that I- I don't even know those. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, but I, I'm sure yeah. they're great. <laughs> and I bet right. that they take a lot right. of research. But it's like for us, I mean, we, you know, we have the experience of like hours all yeah. night research. Yeah. That's not, I don't think anybody's pulling those types of research nights right. for making jokes, which is right. fun. Because yeah, I, yeah. I, it's I probably better that. without all of that yeah. minutia. Right. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So, so, okay. But, so, but yeah. you feel like it's legitimized or? You I know, mean, what, I, no, it's, yeah. it's even the answer is so much less good than the question because it's like we got married because that's what we wanted to do it's what we had in our heads it's the way yeah. that our like i don't think i'm a simple person or that my wife is a simple person but i think in that sense we're like yeah yeah we're good for like the sort of vanilla standard path in that sense yeah and so i think you know there are i don't know i mean legal thing i mean uh, that said you know we're gay and so we have employed since all of this like election stuff has mm. started and you know whatever like yeah. extra help in terms of lawyers to like sign papers like if it should happen, God forbid, right. that we don't count as married anymore, then like, here's what we mean to yeah. declare about each other and stuff Interesting. like that. Interesting. I mean, yeah. do you feel in your expert legal mind, do you feel like that is at risk? Oh, A, I don't have one of those. B. <laughs> yes, uh, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> B. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you know, even if there was an expert legal mind who I trusted, mm -hmm. I don't know that I believe them on that. It's like everything that's happened mm -hmm. under, you know, the, this presidency in the past few years, it's kind of like, even if you're supportive of it and, and yeah. I, you know, it's sort of like you could, not, I don't mean you, Seth, I just mean well, one, like, I will do my best. Yeah. <laughs> you could predict that all of these things were happening. I don't know anybody really who like right. has thought things were expected and uh -huh. so in that sense, I don't know that it's my, I mean, I feel like an expert legal mind in a way is just like a worrier from birth. <laughs> like that's because in, in a way yeah, yeah. there is a, a kernel of truth to that because it's like when you are thinking like a lawyer, right? The thing that we, you know, paid the big bucks to have someone teach us and whatever, right. Right. thinking like a lawyer is just thinking like, well, what if this and yeah. what if this and yeah. you know, that's and always worst case scenarios. Correct. Yeah. And so, an expert legal mind is somebody who's like, well, I well, have of course. no idea. Of course, right. it could. Right. Or yes, I think that's exactly right. Or yeah. of course, the worst case scenario would happen because that's how you take a law school exam, right? right? A court's exam. Every right. single thing happens wrong. Right. You know, or Prepare. that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, and you've got to prepare for the worst and hope yeah. for the best, right? Yeah. In real life. So, yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah. Well, it's good you have it. your bases covered then. I mean, I hope, you know, like, we're, yeah. whatever. Like, we did, we definitely yeah. like exerted efforts. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to take credit for it because it was definitely my wife who was like, we should do this. And I'm like, as a lawyer, I agree that you're right <laughs> and that I should have thought of that. Right. And as um, a good spouse, I also agree that yeah, you're right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, okay. Good. good. Um, and, and your wife is a, uh, why am I forgetting the term? Uh, rabbi. Rabbi, right? Rabbi. rabbi for the yeah. Reformed Jewish faith. Correct. Excellent. So are you guys, like, your guys are never coming back to LA. You're now in, in New Jersey forever. I mean, what's forever, but also... <laughs> well, until death, I guess. You know? Right. Well, and, yeah, and who knows what else. But yeah. um, I... Listen, like, when I, when I had the thought initially, like, upon moving to L.A., that it's going to be three years and all that, my yeah. thought through it and also even on the front end before it all... Before those three years happened, I thought, okay, well, after I come back from L.A., my thought is I'll be in both 
places, you know, mm. like, which is not so different from what I had been doing when I was in LA because we were dating. And so I would go back and forth and whatever. So, and, and honestly in COVID because of all the zoom things, I, I feel in a way, I mean, everybody I think has to some degree this thought, like it doesn't matter where you are right. because we all live on zoom. Right. And, but the other thing is, um, you know, the transition between let's say the, the comedy scenes specifically, or even like the acting mm. communities um, between the two places uh, has been pretty seamless because of, you know, it's like if I get booked by flappers, I don't have to tell them, Oh, well, actually I'm in New Jersey. It's like, they don't care. It's like right. sign the booking agreement, show yeah. up to your computer and great. Right. You know, and I, I mean, I'm not secretive about where I am, but yeah. it's sort of like I've had, the the good fortune at least in you know the recent pandemic past of having connections in both places so that a lot of times i'll have a new york show and then an la show in a night. Mm, yeah right 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 so, sure not bad. and are new york shows at all happening in person there are some kind of underground happening in la yeah. that are in person is new york following the same trend or is it still pretty mm, zoom I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I see when I'm like jealously scrolling on right. Instagram. Is know, there any there other are... way to scroll Instagram? <laughs> right, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Imagine if someone's like, oh, what a lovely thing. I, just I actually do it. like this. I <laughs> right. do like your post. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> more power to that person. But right. um, yeah, anyway. Uh, it I seems... bet Maria Bamford scrolls yeah. that way because she is Could so be. kind. Could be, yeah. right. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, I think that it's similar uh -huh. with, you know, that there's stuff, but I, I don't do that. Like I've done three outdoor things. Um, two were like, it was a comedy show that was in my building, like mm. outside in the courtyard. And I, I had, it was an ego based move on my part because <laughs> I get the email from my building and it's like, there's a comedy show. And I'm like, who runs this comedy show? How are they going to have a comedy show in my house and I'm not on it? And it's like yeah. the ugliest part of me. But then I found the guy and I was like, hey, I'm me. And he was, of course, he was like, yeah, great, hop on, whatever. Yeah. And, and that one was like, it was okay. It was my first one back or two. Oh, okay. Like back to back, my apartment building, and then the one next door to us also has a courtyard. So I did yeah. both of those shows. And boy, was that rough. Was like it? After, after that, I was like, I am a terrific Zoom comedian. Because oh, my I gosh. Just, it was like, like first of all, yeah. I come out and there's like applause from people on their balconies. And I've never yeah. felt less essential than that moment. <laughs> I was like, save it. Like, get your pots and pans for the hospital workers. Like, I'm just here working yeah. out material that's been festering in my brain yeah. that I've like shouted into my computer, maybe a handful of times, you know, whatever. It was just awful. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, whatever. I, it was yeah. fine. But right. it, yeah. Do you, what's your show sitch? I mean, I have done one live show since yeah. the pandemic started and there was definitely a, I, I've been doing zoom Right. So what I noticed from comedians who had not done Zoom and then hopped on live versus mm. the way I felt on stage after doing a bunch of Zoom shows and then going live right. is definitely cobwebs, I think, for everybody, you know, across yeah, the board. Possible. There's a bit of dusting yeah. off. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one thing I've learned from Zoom is to be comfortable in silence, which, which yeah. was a tough thing for me on stage, you know, to... Right. Just trust and let a joke sit for a minute. Yeah. Um, Zoom forces, it's at least forced me to be comfortable in that moment of internet delay. That's so. a, it's a really good point. And I also love the kind of general conversation header for this moment that we're having mm -hmm. of like, how has Zoom comedy affected your comedy generally yeah. because one thing that i've noticed is even before the pandemic i had been trying i was like i want to get more conversational on stage like hmm. truly 
conversational because yeah. when I first, first started, I didn't write anything down and very shooting from the hip. And, you know, sure. and this was years ago at this point, sure. but, sure. um, and then I started really having bits and I was like, okay, fine, we're going to do bits, whatever. But then <laughs> I went through this moment where I was like, okay, but it's feeling a little. Yeah. Written. Yeah. The pendulum. The yeah, and, yeah. Right. Exactly. And so anyway, so like it happened to be around the beginning of 2020, hmm. you know, that I was like conversational. I'm really going to shoot for that. Wow. And I think in zoom, it's forced me. I think it's related to what you're saying with the yeah. silence, because in a conversation, it's not like, like, unless you are like psychopathic in your determination to like yeah. make someone laugh in a conversation, yeah. you're fine. If the yeah. person's like, uh-huh. You're, like you're not going to be like, like. Did wait you not hear what I said? Right, right. That deserved more. Like, what are you saying? You know. Whereas yeah. in a real conversation, you're just like, yeah. yeah, okay. And then I said this, and then you know, Seth said that, and then yeah, it was it was fun to talk to Seth. I'm not like I did amazing. I crushed. Like right. what? You know, it's right. not a thing. Yeah. In, yeah. in a normal dominated person, that conversation. Person. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> yeah. so, you know, so like in zoom comedy i think you, what i had what i have been noticing and had noticed you know specifically mm. at the beginning of it was that was i was like okay so now i'm gonna get to really experience the process of like what conversational could mean for me yeah um, oh so interesting i mean really yeah. it sounds like in your prayers or manifesting to the universe this desire you you sound responsible for COVID-19. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's a good show theme. You know, it's just like, why did you cause the pandemic? Because <laughs> I feel like everyone, you know, it's like right. we're all, you know, heroes in our own story or anti-heroes in our own story. Sure. And so it's kind of like everyone has this like, oh my God, I, I wish for this. But yeah, I think right. that's- Right, that's I just needed more it. time to myself Right. and boom. God gave us COVID-19. I needed a staycation. That's exactly what I was asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. my goodness. So, okay. So being married to a, uh, a, a rabbi, have you felt since getting married, moving in together, you know, creating your home together, it, has religion become more a part of your life, less a part of your life, or has it sort of stayed the same? And then with COVID, I mean, yeah. has that pushed you less toward God or more toward God? Or where do you kind yeah. of stand on all that? Great. Um, I, I don't know in terms of my personal belief in God that it's been more or less. I have always been really into God. Sure. Like, it's just, it's never, and, and I feel very fortunate because I love a lot of self-help books. And, and like the first chapter in like almost all self-help books is, <laughs> the author having some version yeah. and anonymous groups is the same thing. It's like, listen, I'm going to say God, but you can substitute <laughs> whatever. And I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah. Like say God, King of the universe, Lord, I don't right. care. Right. I am That's fine it. with somebody. If it's, you know, a man with a beard in the sky or a genderless <clears throat> construction of my best self, like whatever right. it is, I'm right. fine praying to it, submitting, being humble, whatever. I'm yeah. fine with that. I've, yeah. I always have been. Mm -hmm. That's just never been like my obstacle in my own brain. And yeah. for that matter, it's like, it's like I also have never needed a proof that God does or doesn't exist because I'm just like, I have no idea about the truth of the mm. matter but all i can say is i have no idea how i got here yeah i have no idea how my family got here <laughs> bless you i Thank have you. and i mean that from god it's a direct right. message i, I um, appreciate it i appreciate it for sure i mean i said i would tell him so anyway <laughs> uh <laughs> i did uh <laughs> If he does it again, I'll say it again. Okay, uh, uh, sorry. That was we, very Ellen DeGeneres of you. It was perfect. Really? That's oh, like my perfect. goal. Is that right? Is, is to have a God joke. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so that just was never my obstacle. I was just sure. like, you know what? Sure. Like yeah. that's yeah. that's an, it, simultaneously an easy answer and a difficult answer. Yeah. And I'm here for it. And, and that's fine. In yeah. terms of like, 
the kind of structured aspects of religion, like synagogue going and that sort of thing. So, you know, the Temple of Zoom is very much a part of my life uh -huh. because first of all, as we know, my wife is a rabbi. And so there's like, you know, it's like a telethon from our apartment <laughs> all the time. It's like, who did we upset? What's uh, wrong at the temple? Yeah. You know, and then my mother is the president of the sisterhood at her temple. Okay. And so there's, it's like when my wife and my mother are talking, it's just like, Okay, what did your what did your head rabbi talk about? It's so yeah. synagogue based, and wow. so the answer to your question, my dad also died, and so like oh that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's it's whatever. unexpectedly, I mean, expectedly. It, you I know, mean, I, you know, there's no way to really prepare, right? Right, so. right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was a mix. I would say, like, my dad had heart disease for like many, many years of his life. And it was kind of like, it, it, it was only unexpected because he had survived so many other <laughs> right. things yeah. that we were always so scared of. Yeah. And then, you know, he was like, like my dad, when I was growing up, it was always like, listen, I'm not like going to live past 55, kind of like that sort of thinking. Wow, sure. And then he did, which is great. Yeah. And a testament to, you know, him, him and his will and yeah. doctors and him taking care of his health in yeah. various ways and my mother taking care of him, all, all that stuff. Yeah. And so it was, ex it was expected in that way, but not right. really. I mean, he, right. he didn't die of COVID, thankfully, I guess, but like, um, <laughs> sure. I don't know, you sure. know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, when my grandma passed away, she'd been sick with Alzheimer's right. for years. Right. And, you know, my dad was sort of like, well, yeah, you know, you always, you know, it's going to happen, but you don't right. expect it that day. So, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. it's, it's a surprise in the moment, obviously, right. but right. yeah, reality of life is that one day this life will end. And, yeah. uh, you know, depending on your religious outlook or spiritual outlook, another life begins or, or life continues in another way, you know? Right, right. Uh, that brings me to some jokes. Oh, <laughs> good, good. I'm glad we um, hit it. I'm glad we hit yeah. it. No, no, but uh, I- Well, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank um, you, Seth. I yes. appreciate you. And um, I I'm also sorry for the loss of your grandmother. Uh, this was a long time ago. So okay. Then she's I'm over not. it. We're all yeah. over it. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. I, he, okay. Um, but. <laughs> it's fine. They get along. They're okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so the, but the reason I brought it up in this moment is yeah. just that like when someone dies, yeah. there's kind of an extra uh, hit of religion yep. Yep. that happens because of, death related rituals and right, those of course. happened right when i moved back because Got i was already it. planning to move back and it was moved up uh, literally yeah. one week because my dad had died and so uh so anyway so that has also contributed to yeah you know, sort of added measure of yes, of religiosity right. yeah. yeah gotcha yeah i can relate to that very much i mean in in the sense that god's always been a part of my life and so yeah. You know, it's not more or less because of the pandemic. It's just yeah. a different form, you know, yeah. kind of the same, more of the same. Yeah. Uh, interesting. All right. Yeah. So as, you know, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is, I mean, especially with the way society is now on homosexuality, which is much more open to it, which is great. Yeah. But, you know, from a religious standpoint in my religion, many argue we're still very close-minded when it comes to homosexuality. And I can understand that aspect, yeah. but I'm curious about other religions and how it fits in to a, a view of eternity. Uh, so I'm curious for reformed Judaism, or if you feel like you belong to that mm. kind of aspect of Judaism or, yeah. or kind of where you classify yourself, how does, you know, homosexuality and gender in a larger picture, how do those fit in? if at all, or is it just like, you know, we're all sort of amorphous, there are confines to this life. How does that work, you know, for, for you? Yeah, I mean, well, I, so I have maybe a unique story in that I mm. was raised going to a conservative synagogue and also attending 
an Orthodox, modern Orthodox, but an Orthodox Jewish day school. Wow. So there okay. was some dissonance there. And <laughs> sure. you know, the way that I have said it before is that my parents wanted me to know precisely what we were doing wrong at home. <laughs> yeah. And so this idea of, yeah. you know, listen, school's going to say you can't go out on Saturday. We, we go out. Yeah. And, right. And it's kind of like, <laughs> what? Like, I think my yeah. parents, like, it's like they wanted me to be aware of like what it feels like to be kind of on the inside and the outside. And, and it could have, I suppose it could have really messed me up, but I don't sure. think it did. I think it kind of gave me this, um, maybe I had it before, it's hard to know, but like, you know, this, this comfort being someone who's like in a room and sort of looking like, okay, what are they doing? You know, <laughs> and rather than being like somebody who's like, well, of course the room is doing this. So yeah. we'll do this. Yeah. And in that sense, I mean, you know, so my parents weren't into me being gay um, <laughs> and, you know, in joke form, like, and, and I, I don't mean it to like land a punchline, but just, it feels disingenuous to say something without saying it's joke. But like right. my parents weren't into me being gay when I first told them, then I started dating a rabbi. They're like, hold on, we're proud. And so <laughs> that is true. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Degree. You know, uh -huh. it was a more gradual process, but like, Anyway, yeah, and, and sure. I don't know. I, I kind of was always aware that like being gay was wrong according to some. Uh-huh. But doesn't that make it all the more fun? Oh, right, and, right, right. Only no, adds but, to the allure, right, obviously. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I also, and maybe this is interesting in terms of the religious perspective, but I did always feel like I had a, a kind of like wink relationship with mm. god and i was like you don't care right <laughs> and like i i had a sense that he's yeah. like oh no i don't i don't care at all but yeah. like let them think i care you know and, <laughs> right. and I, it makes them happy listen this yeah. is it's about them it's not about you <laughs> but like you can know that i, I said it's fine just interesting fine. yeah yeah and and yeah. i don't know where that comes from and it's not it's not my contention that i am right you know sure. i don't know but sure. it's just like a sense that i've had that i'm like well you can't you're not no, it's you know what I mean. Like I was yeah. just like, you can't be saying that, and yeah. and I believe that to be true, but again, I don't know exactly from where because every hmm. even you know it's like my parents and school didn't agree on everything. Like for example, the going out on on Shabbos or whatever, yeah, you know. But but somehow they agreed about this gay stuff, hmm. and I just was like, okay, like I get it, but like I'm just not here for the fact that you're saying what I what I deeply want is wrong. Um, yeah, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's my answer, but I don't know exactly like, it's not like I have a statue to point to that says like, and here's why, you know? <laughs> right, well, I mean, you'd probably be a, a little bit hard pressed to find anything in the Torah that would support yeah you know, outright support homosexuality. Right, right. Um, sure. yeah. But I think really the question is, you know, why not, right? I think that's probably yeah. more the question that we're getting to. Yeah. And, and does it matter? You know, both of those right. questions. And I guess, you know, I'm sort of with you, but on, on the other side, you know, I sort yeah. of like, well, I can understand why it would be somewhat, um, not problematic, but like, doesn't really fit this paradigm for sure. what I understand to be the afterlife, or at least the right. goal of the afterlife. Right. But certainly things will be worked out at that point. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To and where everyone's kind of like, okay, we got it. We're we're yeah. all on the same page. Right. And whether yeah. that's fixed, you know, through uh, or arranged through uh, a difference of gender or something that, you know, God's just like, hey, we were in a fallen, you were all were in a fallen world. Mistakes happen. It's mm. okay. Here's where we are now. Or yeah. who knows? You know, yeah. technology might be amazing where where heaven <laughs> is, and who knows what yeah. they're capable of. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess my my view on it is obviously as long as people aren't hurting each other over their ideas, yeah, we can agree to disagree, and sure. that's 
fine, right? As long as yeah. we're kind to each other to come right. back to this idea, that's right. really what matters. And, and I, for me, that, has, that, that is what was interesting growing up in kind of this monolithic place of Utah is that there's a lot of, you know, yes, our scriptures, our religion teaches to love and honor and respect everybody, yeah. regardless of what they're doing. And right. in fact, if they're sinning, you should love them even more because they need more love, right? Yeah. But then you run into somebody who, you know, does drugs and your parents are like, well, you definitely can't hang out with them. Uh, <laughs> and so- Love them behind their back. <laughs> right, right. You tell them, tell them yeah. they're fine, but yeah. never speak to them, okay? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. So, you know, all that to say, I, th I think we agree just uh, on, op you know, slightly different ends of this, yeah. but that's well, interesting. Also, yeah, for sure. And it's like, I think that that aspect of, you know, lawyerly thinking mm. is, is something that I really appreciate is like the ability to understand that somebody on the other side of an argument isn't on the other side of your friendship or love or whatever. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, I went to the university of Chicago. There were a lot of conservative people, a lot of Mormons actually, sure. That's like a, a, a lot of BYU grads yeah. would go yeah. to UFC for law school. Yeah. And, and it was like an interesting thing because for me, you know, I mean, I went to Jewish day school through high school. Mm. Then I went to Penn, which is basically Jewish day school for college. <laughs> uh -huh. And then went to Chicago. And it really was, it's, I mean, I don't think that I was like, I never was so closed minded that I actually thought that my bubble was equivalent to the world. Like yeah. on an intellectual level, I understood that it was not. Sure. But in internalizing that I don't think happened for me until law school. Mm. And then the idea that like, you know, a lot of those folks ended up having different viewpoints and there's a federalist society that like meets often and happens right. to have very good free food <laughs> at their events. Cause they hey. had a lot of money. And so right. it was like, interesting to you know just become more aware of that and certainly in comedy too yeah. there's you know this idea of like well that person is a nut job on stage but i love to watch them yes you know? yeah of course of course and there might be some people that just can't turn it off off yeah. stage but they're right. still incredibly entertaining to be around you know for sure yeah um yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's very interesting. I mean, I, I feel very similarly in that sense, you know, of, of kind of always realizing, yeah, other people view the world differently and that's not right. good, that's not bad. But but yeah, I, I, I think what more important message, Liz, could you give to the world on election day than, hey, we can disagree, but yeah. still get along. It's okay. Well, and I, love, I, I think that's so wonderful. And I love that you're bringing it back to election day specifically. Um, because I mean, there's, you know, I'm so happy that you and I specifically could do this on election day. Yeah. Fortuitous, really. Yeah. 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 Look at yeah. us. I mean, Sitting we're modeling, forward. we are modeling what the country should be doing every day. I think that's right. This is what Washington DC should be happening. Ah. This is what should be happening in Washington DC. Yeah. They're all lawyers. They should yeah. understand that you yeah. can have a legitimate viewpoint on the other side of an argument. For sure. and, and you just hash it out and then let people vote and, and decide. And then you just kind of walk away, you know, yeah. take your paycheck and go home. <laughs> Burning <laughs> the bridge behind you. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. So, uh, well, very fun. So, so what is, what has been going on for you during COVID? What have you been doing to keep yourself busy other than crashing your neighborhood live shows? Oh yeah. Uh, and, and the they Zoom shows. Me. And then I did a bar mitzvah like a couple of weeks later. And that one was very good. Interesting. Was outside and, and yeah, it was, it was a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So was it all family friendly stuff or my understanding of a bar yeah. mitzvah is that it's, you know, for, for, yeah. for boys, right. Turning 12, right. right? Cause they have uh, a, 13, 13, for a 13. Yeah. And, um, and for girls, what is it called? A bat mitzvah? Bat mitzvah. Yeah. Okay. It's just son and daughter. That's what it translates to in, it. Uh, in Hebrew. So yeah, yeah. It was family friendly stuff. Um, it was, it was a lot of fun and it was like, you know, a redemptive set for me in the sense that the apartment <laughs> sets were like so bad, but, um, <laughs> yeah. but 
Uh, yeah, so that it was fun and, and was the kind of set that felt like productive. And so to your question, mm. in terms of what else I've been doing, I don't know that really what I've been doing is like writing jokes. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. But like my, my way of writing jokes has always been as a by the way, you know, yeah, sure. like, I don't, I don't sit down and I'm like, I'm going to write some jokes. And it's just never been that way. I feel like I'm always more interested in like, what am I learning? What am I observing yeah. about the world, my life, my past and my future? Like putting that stuff together is always the thing. Mm. And I say, by the way, and I, you know, I'm just thinking about that phrase for a moment because it's sort of like the way for me is this sort of like, like what is enlightenment? And like, I'm always trying to yeah. get to some sort of I don't know, it, state of being where I know myself the best or whatever. And mm. by the way, I think of some funny this. things. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And so, so, yes, I've been writing that stuff, but I don't know that it's the way. In terms of what I'm actually <laughs> working on, I'm working on yeah. an album. Oh, very that's nice. Special, Good. Yeah. That's truly like a, a quarantine pandemic type of special. Uh -huh. Not in the sense that the jokes are about COVID. I have some, but it's really, I, you and I have talked about my fortunes mm -hmm. and finding fortunes on the ground. So like fortunes from fortune cookies, but just like minus the cookie, minus the whole Chinese <laughs> right. food meal. No work, just coming across the fortune. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. so so we're into the hundreds at this point. Wow. And it's the kind of thing that whenever I talk about it on stage, not that it never works, because I have like evidence of it working. Sure. But it's, it's, it's more of like, isn't this the weirdest thing in the world? Because that's how I feel about it. Uh -huh. And it's like, and, and so anyway, so like, I have always desired since it started happening in the numbers that it's been happening to do some sort of work that is about it, ah. and catalogs it. And I'm like, this might be a great opportunity. I've been working with videos. I've, yeah. I've posted some, you know, in my internet presence yeah. or whatever, yeah. but just like, like talking to camera with old footage interspersed. Um, but like where the whole specials focus is, Hey, I had all these hmm. fortunes. They just happened to me. I don't know really what it means, but like, this is what they said. Yeah. This is what I think. This was, ha this is what was happening to me at that time. Here are some <laughs> videos of me at that time. And I'm going to come in interspersed throughout those little vignettes of each fortune and describe to you what it was. And like, that's the special yeah. oh, primary wow. sources. And very fun. Thank you. That's uh, a great I idea. That's sort of like a, a, a different take on kind of what Jenny Slate put out on Netflix not too long ago. Yeah. Right? Uh, snippets of her childhood and, yeah. you know, adolescence and all that. So, right. oh, that'll be right. fun. Well, we'll be on the lookout for that. That'll Thanks. be great. Yeah. That'll be great. Yeah. Uh, well, good. And before, before we close and before you get to plug all of this stuff that you're doing yeah. and where to sure. find you, uh, I want to give you the chance. I'm doing this segment now called What's the Deal with Mormons? I realize I may not have prepped you as much as I should have for this to let you really delve and do the lawyer research into what you sure. wanted to exactly. I already know my question. Good. I know my question. Good. So we're going to go. What's the deal with Mormons? Liz Glazer. Sprite. So I oh. get that it's not caffeinated, but is there a cultural association within the Mormon community to Sprite specifically? Uh, that, that we identify as Sprite drinkers? Sure. Is that I what you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it a thing? No. Okay. No, not really. I mean, honestly, I, I can name more members of my faith who drink Diet Coke than oh. drink Sprite as a Caffeine general free? rule. Okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, and you know, I think this gets to kind of a common misconception, which is that Mormons are against or have a rule against drinking caffeine. Oh, is that not true? It's, it is not true, but it is very, uh, I, I think, easily mistaken, right? Because we have rules against coffee and tea. And what is generally thought to be the addictive substance in those is caffeine. Uh -huh. But for whatever reason, uh, so, and you'll be interested in this because you're a lawyer and, you know, religiously minded. I mean, so, my uh, brain's firing at this point. I'm like, is right. it the hot drink aspect? That's what do it. they say about hot cocoa? That's it. So <laughs> hot drinks, it, it comes from our word of wisdom and the, and the verbiage is hot drinks. 
And ah. that was later translated. Wait, are you serious? I'm serious. I'm serious. Oh, okay. But that was later interpreted by Joseph Smith. He basically said, by hot drinks, the Lord meant coffee and tea. So herbal tea, fine. It's not a temperature thing. It's specifically about drinks that get you kind of going in the belly, right? So for whatever yeah. reason, the chemical formulation of tea and coffee do this thing that we don't want to do. Okay. Whereas herbal tea, great. Hot chocolate, fantastic. Love huh. me some hot cocoa. Uh, but you know, I also love the Mountain Dew. The cold caffeine, can't beat uh -huh. it. So, wow. That's yeah. very enlightening, Seth. I really appreciate it. And I was so totally go. wrong and the misconception was mine. Well, I mean, honestly, it's not, a, it's not a bad one because, I mean, even growing up, I mean, my dad hated Coca-Cola. And, and I always thought it was sort of a religious thing for him too, because that's kind of, you know, what he led me to believe. I also grew up thinking Disney was, a, was like a church affiliated organization, a company, really? because my dad loves Disney, huh. you know? I love Disney too. I do too. I mean, it's great, yeah. right? Uh, right. Ooh, and we can good. skip over the Mulan stuff. Let's just skip over <laughs> the Mulan stuff. Yeah. Um, so, but, but BYU also had this mandate against serving caffeinated cola, caffeinated, oh. you know, soda. So a lot of members of the church have grown up and 100% believe that caffeine is, uh, is a no-go. So it's not just you. It's also an issue kind of within the faith, right? Of people right. having these kind of cultural thoughts about what is acceptable and not acceptable. But yeah. religiously totally fine to drink the Mountain Dew, the Diet Coke, no problem. Tab. You know, yeah, tab. Oh, man. <laughs> we had that in my, in where I went to law school in the, in the like. Did you? Cafeteria. It was like the little store. In yeah. School. Yeah. And I, I had, I grew up being, I'm 41. And so when I was growing up, I was aware of tab, but, <laughs> but I, I never had it because it was like, there was another uh, um, cola that was called Jolt. Jolt. Yeah. And I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. And those two was like, I don't know if I was explicitly forbidden <laughs> from having it, but like, definitely it was like, yeah, you don't have those. Like nobody <laughs> needs that much right. caffeine. <laughs> and then right. I go to law school and it's like, it's tab is there. And at the time sure. I was into it, but you know, I think it was just an association thing. Right. Or out of necessity. I don't know. Sometimes yeah, I don't think I worked that hard in law school. Because, no, here's the thing. I you didn't need to, school. Liz. You didn't. It's Some of us. Good. It's not true. It's not yeah. true. I, I yeah. wasn't that good a law student. But <laughs> truly, it's just, I really, I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But it's basically, the University of Chicago has a ridiculous grading system that for no reason that I know goes on a scale from 55 to 90. Wow. And nobody actually gets higher than an 84. None of this is based in any rationale. Yeah, And there's a legend on the bottom of the transcript that explains this, <laughs> but I'm convinced that any job I got by yeah. anyone who saw my transcript after I graduated from law school didn't understand it, uh -huh. despite the legend, but just because it's so confusing for no reason that only if you were literally subjected to it as a student or i guess if you were faculty and had to grade within it would yeah. you would even you know it? what any of it meant but i guess it's sort of the joke is on whoever hired me because it's like <laughs> listen if you thought that i was smart based on these grades you're the dumb one <laughs> So, so did like, they not give you like a, you know, like a three, seven or a three, no, six? No, or, there wasn't anything like none that. Of that. It, was like, it was like a 77. A, a picture of a unicorn or something. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Right. So it just made no sense. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I was going to say one other thing related to law and now I don't remember. But that's oh, not. it'll come back. It'll come back. Maybe. Did, did you get a class rank? No, there wow, was man. only like, if you were really special sure, you had some like, sort of asterisks yeah, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that but no yeah, we yeah. didn't have rank there are so many times now that i think about my law school applications where i should have just been like hey harvard you think you're such a great school yeah. take me see what you can do with me that'll yeah. prove if you're a good school or not Fair. why don't you right. prove it to me you know right yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing is it's actually like I I have taught, you know, 
a variety of aptitudes in law students. Uh, sure. And one of my professors told me that she was like, it's much easier to teach much higher ranked in terms of, you know, traditional testing yeah. reasons that people consider themselves higher ranked or right, smarter, or smarter or whatever. Students yeah. than it is to teach students who've performed less well to get wherever they are. Huh. And I had the chance, I mean, I, I taught a lot of smart students and a lot of not as smart students like across schools. And yeah. I truly believe that like everybody has like different abilities and stuff like that. Sure. But, but I know what she meant because it's kind of like when you, I think the difference is that if you're someone who enjoys being in the tangents and uh -huh. the kind of like the what ifs on the what ifs, yeah. you can really let yourself go <laughs> if you're among people who've excelled yeah. in the business of that. Yeah. Whereas if you're, if you're teaching to people who are just like, in it for the black letter law or something more simple. Yeah. Um, it's just harder. You yeah. know, it's harder yeah. because you're like, oh, whatever I just said was totally over your head. Right. And, and the thing right. is, to those people, it's kind of like, you're right. It was completely <laughs> idiotic that I thought that was interesting. But regardless. Right. But here we are. Here yeah, we are. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, you know, to fully answer your question on this caffeine thing, I should say to pay all lip service to those I should, the spirit of and purpose of the word of wisdom is to uh, purify our bodies so that we are able to be influenced by the spirit, right? We shouldn't oh, okay. be addicted really to anything, right? And you yeah. can be addicted to a lot of different things, right? You can be addicted to, you know, scrolling Instagram jealously. Yeah. Uh, and we, you know, we shouldn't, we should be free of all of those things so that we can be yeah. influenced by the spirit. So that being said, caffeine for some is very addictive and should be avoided, right? Just That's like funny. all of the other more explicitly mentioned substances. But, sure. you know, all that being said, it's, it's, it, there it is. The other part that I find very fascinating is as a church, we are required, you know, through uh, interviews uh, yeah. so that we can go into what we call our temples, which, you know, a little bit different structure than a Jewish temple. But anyway, yeah. uh, you have to answer certain questions, right, about how you live your life and things like That's that. Right. And the word of wisdom actually has two parts to it. There are a lot of do nots, which yeah. are part of these temple interview questions, but there are a lot of do's that are not part of the temple interview questions, like eating meat sparingly, exercising uh. regularly, you know, all of these things where it's like, we, at some point, I think these are going to start becoming questions. And right. there are a lot of physically unhealthy members of my faith that- yeah maybe they shouldn't judge so harshly when I drink the Mountain Dew, you right. know, they should right. maybe exercise a bit more just in case, you know, I think we yeah. all kind of have our thing, you know, sure. some sure. more visible than others, but anyway, so that's the very long answer to your I love to the your long questions. answer. I'll always yeah. take a long answer. And of I remember course. what I was going to say. Good. Good. Is, thank God. Yeah. Um, you were saying about like working hard in law school. And then that made me think of, the, I did not work hard in law school and it wasn't mm. because I was so good at law school. It was because I was so scared of law school. Uh. And also I remember during orientation, I don't know if you, if you experienced this, but like before one L year, I feel like, you know, all the kind of like getting you ready, like you mm -hmm. show up at school and before there's school school, there's like, you know, sessions with free yeah. pizza, like right. about school. Right. And all of those sessions, I just remember <laughs> them being like, make sure to take breaks, yeah. just make sure to take breaks. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure the breaks are not the problem <laughs> for me. <laughs> and yeah. I was right. Like <laughs> I, I was yeah. like so scared of my homework at all times that I just was like, you know what? I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to like dance around my room, listening to Rick Astley <laughs> B-sides. Like that was what I did. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. that, I mean, it wasn't like any super thought, but that. Right. Was what I was thinking. Oh, that's so funny. I, I remember one L year 
first there was orientation sure. where they talked a lot about substance abuse. And I was just oh, like, hey, yeah. that is not a problem for me. Is right. that a problem for everyone around me? I didn't right. realize that, that was a problem for everyone around me. Right. So there was that aspect of it. But then I remember going to a few classes and overhearing conversations and talking to some people and finding out there'd been sort of a, uh, you know, come, come to our campus early for a few months and kind of get acclimated to the way law school is going to be. And I was like, I'm already left out of this loop. There's some inside crowd that I wasn't a part of. I mean, how is this now fair? We're all going to be, you know, so immediately with the injustice, never really left. You had a a lifetime of fighting it. (laughs) Yeah. As, as the wasp, I just felt so (laughs) cheated. Yeah. Anyway, Liz, let me let you plug some stuff. I, I, sure. I could talk to you forever. And the we'll same. just have to have you back for a part three oh, thank you. Uh, at some Makes point in the future. Yes. Maybe when your special releases. We'll yeah, that would be great. That'd be fun. I'm, I'm always happy to talk to you, you know, recorded, not recorded. You're a delight. I <laughs> right. love you and I love this podcast. In terms uh, well, of thank me, you. thank you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Liz Glazer, Twitter at Elizabeth Glazer, www.dearlizglazer.com. That'll be where the special comes out. I also have a podcast. It's called Finding 40 at Ooh. Finding 40 uh, on Instagram. And you can find that wherever podcasts are. And otherwise, I have a lot of stuff on my hard drive. So if you find a way to get into my computer, uh, <laughs> then, you know. Are you, you listening, Russia? Are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's how to find me. Excellent. Liz, thank you so much. We'll be keeping our eyes out for the special is going to be called what? Primary Sources. Primary Sources. Oh, I love it. Even even law school affiliated. Look at that. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Beautiful. Liz, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful election day. Stay safe. The and uh, yeah. tell tell your now wife hello for us. Yeah, I was going to say love to your to your whole family. Thank yes, you. Yes, I will pass it and on. Thank jerk. you. Okay. And, and my what? And your church. Right. Yeah. Well, when we can meet again, uh, yeah. you know, I'll let them know. I'll you tell them over Zoom. Do you stuff or no? We, we've been doing some broadcasts of much smaller meetings. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, you know what? We love this. It's been family church. So, oh, that's you know, nice. Yeah. We've gotten, so the, the way the Mormon faith works is there's a bishop who's the leader of the congregation and he holds kind of the authority to administer the sacrament, uh, you know, for most Christians communion. Right. Um, and, and and he's given all essentially all worthy males, uh, because males hold the priesthood, which is necessary to officiate in the sacrament for, for my church, given everybody permission to do it at home. So we have, you know, a minute church at home, with sacrament and it's yes. it's one of the best things ever it's been oh. great so. well i hope that that continues to be great yeah and you know when we go back into mass gatherings i hope that's great too again yes we'll share we'll your see. hopes okay see you soon. beautiful so thank you for having me thank you liz absolutely take yeah. care you too bye, bye.